Expecting a baby is very exciting, but having a baby is really expensive. In this video, we're gonna go over eight different expenses that you'll run in through throughout your pregnancy before the baby even arrives and how to prepare for them. Hey everyone, my name is Nailea with Do Money, and I am currently expecting my second baby. These are expenses that I ran into during my first pregnancy and expenses that I have run into once again during my second pregnancy three years later. As you can see, I am nearing the end of my term, so I'm hoping to help all of you, whether you're near the end, in the middle, or at the beginning of your pregnancy, to know what to expect expense-wise, what's coming up, and how to mitigate those expenses. The very first thing to do is review your insurance coverage. What amount of copay do you have? When will the baby be born in the year? Will they be born at the beginning of the year when every all of your deductibles and everything have restarted so you know you're starting from scratch? Or will they be born near the end of the year when you may have paid into and maybe met your deductible and now working on your out-of-pocket maximum? Get to know all of these all of this terminology and understand how much money you might be paying out of pocket for all of these expenses. Also, make sure that your doctors and your hospital and everything that you need around your pregnancy when it comes to medical insurance is in your network. The worst thing you can do for yourself is go visit a doctor and understand that they are out of your network and then you'll have to pay higher copays, higher deductibles, um, and higher prices for those expenses. This leads to the very first expense that you're going to run into when you're pregnant is your checkups. Throughout most of your pregnancy, if you are not high risk, you will likely just go to the doctor once a month. Then when you get near the end, you'll be going every two weeks and then every week until the baby is born. So you need to keep in mind, how much does that cost? What you can do is call your insurance or go online to your insurance website and figure out what the copay is going to be for each one of those checkups. So you know what you'll have to pay out of pocket and now you'll get an idea throughout your pregnancy for the next nine, 10 months, what you're gonna be paying for checkups. The next expense you're gonna run into is ultrasounds and lab work. If you have a normal pregnancy, you will normally get two ultrasounds, one at the beginning, one at 20 weeks, usually to find out the gender if you haven't already done the blood work, which leads me to lab work as the other expense. You do get lab work quite a few times throughout your pregnancy, so keep in mind how much is the lab work going to cost and do not get sidetracked or derailed by additional lab work that might be offered by the office that will cost you a lot more like genetic testing for example is usually not covered by insurance so make sure that you understand that if you're getting genetic testing how much that's going to cost you out of pocket if at all the next expense you're going to run into which hopefully you will have started before you even got pregnant um, but if not, that's okay, your prenatal vitamins. These are going to range between 10 and $30. And a big tip is to ask your OBGYN if they have any sample boxes of prenatal vitamins. That'll save you, you know, anywhere from $100, $200, or who knows how many sample boxes they might give you uh, throughout your pregnancy so that you can stay healthy and the baby can stay healthy. This next expense is really hard for some. It's the maternity wardrobe. The first thing I urge you to do is to look inside of your own closet. And if you know someone that is very crafty, that is good at DIYing clothes, that has a sewing machine, I highly recommend you start there. Take any oversized shirts and potentially add an elastic band under, under your chest so that you it can turn into a maternity shirt. Also adding elastic bands to the side of a shirt will make it maternity as well and make you look super cute, super comfortable throughout your pregnancy without spending too much. The other tip that I have for that is to borrow from someone else or ask around to see if anyone's done having babies and now you can use their maternity clothes. Don't go out to these expensive maternity shops and buy a shirt for $60 when you were gonna need more than that and uh, and it'll just be a waste of money, especially if you're not having planning on having any more kids. The other thing I've done throughout my pregnancies is go to places like Old Navy and grab some $5 tees, and I will add an elastic band to those tees under the, under the breast and on the sides, and now I have a maternity shirt. So that cost me a lot less than our brand name maternity tops. There's definitely maternity wardrobe items that you want to have that are staple items. 
I would say, depending on the weather, where you live, if you're in a cooler climate, you're going to want at least one or two pairs of maternity jeans that are fit very comfortably, and you can get some online. I can link below the ones that I bought online. Also, maternity tops and tank tops, I highly recommend that you already think ahead and grab some tops that have clips. Uh, for example, this tank top has a clip for breastfeeding if you plan on breastfeeding. And I'm preparing my wardrobe twofold. One, during my pregnancy and then post-pregnancy when I'm breastfeeding, I'm already ready to go. I really love these tank tops. I have uh, quite a few of them for my first pregnancy and uh, I think I'm gonna buy another set. I think they come in three and I'll link it below on my from Amazon. I got them as well. It was very true to size and I'm really happy with the quality of the tank tops. The next expense I wanna talk about is baby gear. Let's be real practical here. This can go through the roof, okay? A fancy bassinet that rocks itself or something crazy like that is not necessary. There are hundreds of millions of women throughout history, billions of women that have had babies and have not had a self-rocking bassinet. Um, so I think it's all about perspective and really looking at what might be needed for your baby. Start with the basics of what you need. There's really good lists out there. Even the like Amazon Target baby registry will give you a list or checklist of items that you might need. Of course, there are plenty of superfluous things on there, but keep in mind, ask your friends that have had babies, ask your your mom how she did it with you, you know, um, if you can, and even your grandma, just to get some perspective on what is really needed for a baby. Thankfully, we thought we may have another child in the future, so we kept a lot from our first baby, but now that we um, know that for sure we have one more coming and it's a girl and I already have a boy, um, there are a couple of things that I need again and some things that I need refreshed. So I am having a baby shower, a very small family gathering, like a backyard barbecue. And this leads me to my next expense, is the party expense. I know that it's really great to have a giant, fantastic baby shower with everyone you know, um, rent a venue, get food catered. Those are all these ideals for a baby shower. But keep in mind that financially, you want to spend less on a baby shower than you would buying all of the items that people are going to give you for the baby shower. The whole point is to uh, have your family and friends help you out financially by getting those items that you need. And if you can't pay cash for something, don't get sucked into those store credits. No, you don't need a new credit card. No one needs to get a credit card or store credit for baby items. There are tons of marketplaces out there, the Facebook marketplace, secondhand stores, even asking your friends and family for items that you will need for the baby. So don't get suckered into those credit cards or store cards. The next big expense you'll run into if you're planning on breastfeeding is a breast pump. Know that your insurance will very likely provide you a free breast pump starting at 28 weeks, you can go ahead and order that. So I would call your insurance or go on their website and find out more about your free best breast pump. I've also recently learned that my insurance allows for or will provide a free car seat as well at the end of my pregnancy. So I just know I wrote it down on my calendar that I have to call after the baby is born and ask for that free car seat, which would be a huge help as car seats range between $100 and $300. All right, so now we've come up to delivery time. And like I said, deliveries can cost a lot out of pocket, ranging between three and $15,000, depending on the type of delivery you have, the risk that you have, and whether or not you're, you uh, spend any time in the ICU or your baby spends any time in the NICU. So keep that in mind. Make sure that you are saving from the very beginning. Hopefully you're watching this video at the beginning of your pregnancy or even pre-pregnancy. And I would say start a savings account just for these expenses. Or if you have an HSA account, a health savings account, any kind of health savings account, you want to start depositing more money as much as you can into that account so that you can get the tax benefit um, in order to pay your bills and not pay taxes on those, on those bills. All right, the final expense you 
should know about way before your baby comes is how much your baby is going, it's going to cost to add your baby to your medical insurance. You are supposed to add your child to your health insurance within like 30 days of them being born or depending on your insurance, there is a t- specific time frame. So you want to make sure you know how much your monthly insurance cost is going to go up for uh, throughout the future. All right, those are my baby expenses. I hope that they gave you some insight into what to expect throughout your pregnancy. I am going to now rest and try to breathe. By the time you get to this point, you are either wearing your husband's clothes, which is also a good tip, um, or uh, making sure that you sit down and lift up your legs and take a breather and just sleep as much as you can before that baby gets here. Good luck and we'll see you in my next video.